Hey. Hey. I'm here in real life again in my Sunday best, which means clothes I could potentially sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> which is appropriate because I just ate Whataburger and a peanut butter shake. So your job day is to keep me awake. Okay. Well, I've got a <laughs> riveting, um, you know, this is, I guess, going to be a, a historical episode. But mm -hmm. That's your challenge. Yeah. My challenge is always to try to make something that people like, uh, boring old history and making <laughs> it accessible, exciting, all that. You all know? right. You're so. up against a double double. Do you know what a double double is? Is that a sports term? I don't know, but <laughs> what? You don't my, know? my double double is oh. you go to two different restaurants for like different foods. Mine was oh, an accident, but okay. Yeah. 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 I, okay. That makes sense. I think the actual thing, I thought it was a sports term, like <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> you don't know uh, either. I think it's in basketball when you, um, I'm Googling it while when you, you have two categories, you get double digits in like scoring and maybe like assists or something. It's a basketball thing. Okay. Hold on. I'm so bored. Just looking at this paragraph <laughs> when they reach double figures in two of the main five statistical categories. I, I don't care. Oh, so that. it can be any of them. Mm -hmm. Points, okay. rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. Nice. I thought it was just the, the points and the assist. Those that's what matters, you know, to mm, me. Yeah. Cause I'm, I have a simplistic view of the sport. <laughs> Now I'm wondering if my double double is correct. I mean, it's a thing on like it's a thing on a menu, like Urban Dictionary or something. Mm -hmm. Although it's probably also a sex act. It's or something. definitely got to be a sex act. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's get started. That I'm already awake now. Okay, that was good. All right, yeah, let's jump right into this. So we are covering the history of socialist parties in the United States. I listened to episode one of this on the way here. It's episode seventeen. And it was good. I laughed at all my jokes. I skipped all your jokes. Good. Yeah, they were skippable. I <laughs> I did that on purpose, actually, to make sure that I didn't overshadow you. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's appreciated. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully, listeners, you go and listen to that if you forgot it. Um, but where we left off, we had left off with the Socialist Party uh, heading into World War One. People got thrown in jail because they were against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you had Eugene Debs, their main leader guy, uh, who got thrown in jail for speaking out against against the war and everything. And that's kind of where we left it, because the war ends up really changing things. Not not just the year 1917 ends up, not just the uh, World War One and America's entry into it, but uh, the Russian Revolution as well. Yeah, yeah. A big development. So. I forgot those were happening at the same time. Oh my God. Yeah, it's crazy. So World War One had been going on already, 1914. Yeah. yeah. But America had been strictly isolationist. Mm -hmm. we really didn't want to get involved, most people. A few, you know, kind of crazies were like, yeah, let's do something. But yeah. everybody else was like, no way. Not our thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the debate comes up, gr kind of gradually, should the United States get involved in World War One? gradually that shifts over to... Yes, they should. Okay. Why? <laughs> a good question. Uh, the reason is complicated, tangled up in a bunch of different things. Um, you have, one, the economic reason that American banks had been lending tons of money to the Allied powers. Oh, to okay. Britain, France, the, the Entente. So... Sorry, what was that word? The Entente. What does I that mean? I think that's how you say it. The E-N-T-E-N-T-E. -E Okay, I have no idea. It's, I think it's a French word. I mean, it like sounds like understanding, it. Understanding, or it, it was one of the names for their Ooh, alliance. Okay, that's cute. They had a bunch of money out to them. If okay. they fall to the Germans, they don't get that money back. Oh, that's so shitty that that's the reason, that's but one, okay. That's one of the big reasons. I think um, people debate on how influential that part was. Mm -hmm. There's also, uh, the main official thing is German submarine warfare. Uh, oh yeah, didn't they hit the... Lusitania? Yes, that's right. Wow, look the at me. The sinking of the Lusitania. Although that happens in 1915, I think. Okay, still... we took a while to get mad about it. <laughs> yeah, well, we complained a lot. And so okay. the Germans were like, okay, fine. We won't attack your ships even <laughs> Sorry. though you're secretly delivering arms to our enemies. Uh, yeah. Which we were. So they stopped doing that because they didn't want us to get in the war and fuck stuff up, right? Mm -hmm. But later on, they they kept having to deal with the British and the French keep getting more supplies from us. Mm. So they're like... We're going back to that. We are going yeah. to start sinking your ships again. 
Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. And we were pissed. And they started sinking our ships again, and we were pissed. There's also something called the Zimmerman telegram. That sounds familiar. Is this the one with the thing about Mexico? Yeah. Um, and people at the time were like, I don't know, maybe this is a hoax. Maybe this is just, you know, <laughs> the British trying to get us into the war. But it actually was a real thing that the German, uh, the Germans sent a telegram to Mexico saying, hey, help us out, win this war. And if you help us, you know, defeat our enemies in this and we'll help you reconquer part of uh, the United States that you lost. Pretty we'll help crazy. You take Texas and some uh, other parts of the Southwest. Wow. Mexico looked at this and they were like, you know, their president was like, well, figure this out. Like, what should we do? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we would lose, first of all. So <laughs> let's not do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, just pretend this didn't happen. Or something. Oh, okay. like, deny that. Like, this is bad. Yeah. You know, we don't want this. I thought they were going to tell on them. Yeah, no, no, that, I don't, that's not how it came out, I don't think. I don't quite remember, but the point, when it did come out, mm -hmm. everyone was pissed again. Yeah, right? yeah. So gradually people are demanding more and more. They go from, no, keep us out of the war, to, no, we want in. <laughs> All the while, though, uh, the socialists were like, no, mm -hmm. don't do this. Socialist Party was like, no way. This is an imperialist war. You're pitting the workers of all the different countries in the world against each other. I mean, yeah. that's who's fighting, you know? That's true. Yeah. And if you look at the results of World War One, it was just like, let's carve up Africa. And yeah, it's not good. It, yeah. And how many, you know, hundreds of thousands of people died for what? What did we... <laughs> yeah. What, were, what, what was, was the, the major point? change? Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, the territorial lines of, and colonial lines. Mm -hmm. And there you go. That's it. I mean, different bosses in charge of different places. Yeah. By this point, though, the war, going into the war and everything was very popular. Mm -hmm. And being anti-war now was not popular. Ooh, okay. So the Socialist Party officially it was like, no, this is bad. This is a crime against the people of the United States, is how they put it. They started holding anti-war and anti-draft demonstrations. Oh, shit. Um, like we said, they got in trouble. And this led to a split in the party. Oh, Okay. Uh, these losers who supported the <laughs> war, uh, they left. They went and found their own, uh, founded their own socialist party, but it was like a pro-war party. They had Ugh. the National Party and the Social Democratic League of America. Okay. Um, Got very nationalist very, very fast. They, they just tossed <laughs> national in there, right? Yeah. In the Socialist Party, like its official membership declined because people left to these or they, it was uh, bad for them. But not only that, the government started cracking down on them. Ah. Like we said they got thrown in jail and stuff. Uh, Woodrow Wilson was the president who signed the Espionage Act. Oh, that one. That one sucks. Yeah, this is one of our least favorite laws. Um, it's still a law. Um, <laughs> that's the one they used to throw Eugene Debs in jail, along with a lot of other socialists, a lot of other anarchist activists. Every, you know, Anybody they could get their hands on. Oh, good. Uh, it's, like we said, still on the books. They <laughs> so use it. Be careful. They use it to target whistleblowers. Um, they used it in the 70s to try to stop the Pentagon Papers from being published. Shit. Uh, they used it to lock up Chelsea Manning, a reality winner. They used it to charge Edward Snowden, Julian Assange. Anybody they want to keep quiet. That sucks. Yeah. Not good. It's not good. It should be repealed. Yeah. But it's... um. It originally came from the fight to repress uh, leftist groups. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Socialist Party was in some trouble there. And then you have the Russian Revolution. Hey, I've heard of that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool in some see. ways. So that's episode four, if you want to check that out. <laughs> um, yeah, we covered that rather in depth. In After the Russian Revolution, Lenin invited the International Workers of the World, the IWW, mm -hmm. and the Socialist Party uh, to join the Third International. Nice. Also called the Communist International or the Common Turn. So we covered the first one mm -hmm. in our episode. Did we get to the second one? We mentioned briefly the second one. The second one was uh, the after they had kicked the anarchists out. Oh, okay. It was just the socialists, and it breaks up with World War I. Because uh, all the parties went to their own. They were like, no, we're going to stay loyal to thing. our country. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So the Third International was the one formed by Russia to ally with all the communist countries. Nice. Or all the communist parties of the world. 
the left wing of the Socialist Party wanted to join. That was uh, overwhelmingly, I think they took a referendum and like 90% Damn. of the membership wanted to join. Okay. But the leadership was dominated by moderates. Oh, man. Why did we do that? I, I don't know. I actually don't know why they're in positions there. <laughs> there. Um, or if they like were not moderate, but then changed to moderate once they were in. I don't know. I don't were know they like trying worked. to run for office and shit? And they're like, oh, that'll be bad. Um. Well, I guess that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. It could have been. Yeah. It could have been influential in some way. Mm -hmm. So they're like trying to, they're socialists, but they're trying to be nice about it, I guess. Yeah. And in any case, they fought this tooth and nail. They were okay. very much against Oof. joining the Third International. And so they would have had those cool headquarters by Tatlin though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, what happens is the left wingers of the party try to, uh, they're going to take over. They hold elections like pa just party membership elections uh -huh. and stuff. They're going to take over the leadership in those elections. Oh shit. Because of that vote. Uh huh. Okay. The moderates say, uh, yeah, that election was invalid. You what guys, you guys totally rigged that because otherwise how would you win? <gasps> I hate um, it. And so they just threw out the election. They <laughs> then started uh, kicking out big chunks of their membership. Just kick, you're out of the party now. What the Sorry. Fuck? Uh, they kicked out the entire state organization of Michigan. <laughs> Sorry, Michigan. They're just like, yo, see, we don't want to, <laughs> don't show your face here again. Um, and uh, a lot of what they called language federations. Okay, what's that? So these were interesting. I didn't really know a lot about them. Um, they were kind of like immigrant groups. For oh. immigrants and their families, um, kind of like social, cultural yeah. sort of resources for them. Like today them. in DSA, how you have like different subgroups or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And these were also like at the local level, This you could go there to take language lessons. That's to awesome. To have like a resource for contacting back home, that sort of thing. That's great. Yeah. But they kicked them they out. They kicked them out. <laughs> That's not great. Yeah, because so many of them were voting for the left-wing uh, yeah. member, you know, the left-wing leaders. Damn. So, yeah, there was a big purge, basically. That sucks. Okay. Uh, and so then you had the kicked out members trying to figure out what they're going to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, they Would they try to fight back and retake their position in the party, or would they go do something else, mm -hmm. go start a new party, right? Classic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a uh, <laughs> it's kind of their thing, and I mean now I think we're seeing sort of a pathetic version of that with leftists saying, "Well, are we going to try to reform the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, or are we going to do our own thing?" <laughs> I mean, it's a shadow of a shadow of a shadow yeah, of that. But... <laughs> it's not even the same thing anymore. <laughs> but um, that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> and anyway, so some of them decide. They they kind of split among those two groups. Mm -hmm. Split. Some of them decided we're going to start something new right cool. now, uh, and they go found the Communist Party of America. That sounds great. Great, right? That's the one like that's famous, right? Well, it becomes that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the people who wanted to retake the Socialist Party, they go and try to do so. Okay. They go to the convention. How does that go? Poorly. I imagine because they split in two <laughs> and they so. had already been kicked out. Yeah. So they go to the convention and uh, the losers in leadership, the moderates, uh, they call the cops. What the fuck? They should be kicked out for calling the fucking cops. <laughs> they call the cops. They're socialists. And they're like, let's call the cops and get these guys oh thrown God. out of our meeting. They're, they're no longer socialists. Take away their socialist card. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. So they get kicked out. They leave, you know, pissed. I think they go either next door or down to the basement of that mm -hmm. place or whatever. But they leave the meeting and they found <laughs> their own party called the Communist Labor Party. Okay. So now you've got two. God. New so communist many. parties broken off of the socialist party. Okay, great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need a chart so badly. So the socialist party. Now I'm going to call them the shithead party in my head. <laughs> it was bad. That was bad. <laughs> that was very bad. They, however... How are they going to win me back? back? They, they, keep do, they, they do some good stuff. Okay. So uh, after the split... They continue on. They run Eugene V. Debs for president again I while like he's him. in prison. You okay. Know? So I guess maybe he was in prison while this was going. It's not yeah, his fault. Yeah, he probably wouldn't know? have been for this. He wouldn't have called the fucking cops. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> they probably wouldn't have come if he'd have called them. You know? <laughs> uh, they, in 1924, they end up endorsing the progressive party's candidate for president. Instead of running somebody for themselves, they endorse okay. someone else. Uh, these guys were interesting, the Progressive Party. They're not socialists, but okay. 
they'd definitely be called socialists today, <laughs> um, given what they were about. Um, they're way more progressive than modern day progressives okay. would, would be um, in a lot of ways. Their candidate was Robert LaFollette, also called Fighting Bob. That's a good name. name. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting Bob. Yeah, I, that's... That's cool. We That's need to know they're cool. fighting somebody as a <laughs> please. Yeah, fighting Bernie. Right? Fighting Bernie. It's just up there, the little fist. <laughs> um, so their platform included government ownership of the railroads and Great. electric utilities. Cool. Uh, easy credit for farmers. Cool. Outlawing child labor. Great. This is 1924. We <laughs> still had to fight for Fuck, that's outlawing way child too late. labor. That they eventually do that in 1938. That's very late, guys. <laughs> that's very recent. Yeah, disturbingly <laughs> so. Uh, pro union laws, pro civil liberty laws. They wanted also to end American imperialism in Latin America. Fuck yeah. Uh, and they wanted there to be a referendum before American. Uh, presidents could ask Congress to declare war on it. Nice. Okay. Which, yeah, I mean, like, that's... That'd be great. Good so stuff. the referendum would be like, people vote on it, right? Right. There'd be like, like a people, national people. election that's sort cool. of thing. And say, do we want to go to war? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of the leaders getting Just... to say, do we want to send people to war? Exactly. You know? Yeah. Because they're not the ones fucking going. Yeah. So I thought they were kind of cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's who the Socialist Party went for in 1924. The progressive part, they're not around after that. That's just the <laughs> only time they do something. They're 15 minutes I think of fame. They stick around in Wisconsin, where okay. Lafayette was from. But cool. Anyway, the socialists stick around for a long time until 1972. Oh, okay. Uh, they survive some splits, some mergers. It's really boring stuff, all that. <laughs> okay. Um, just some catty it's nonsense. People arguing about, yeah, are, are we going to support this particular narrow ideological view or this other one? Mm -hmm. like, you know. If you have five socialists in a room, you've got 10 tendencies. You know? <laughs> uh, it's true. Anyway, let's cover a few of the, uh, a few of the highlights of things that they did before they were done. Okay. Uh, they, Greatest hits. When the New Deal came around, they were opposed to that. Oh. So the Great Depression happens and FDR comes in and says, we're going to do the New Deal. Uh -huh. Why? They said, nah. That's, I thought that was a good thing. Well, they uh, Did they said want more? That, yeah, basically. They said that this was a an attempt just to save capitalism. Ooh. That it was just trying to reform a system that couldn't be reformed. And instead, they were like, we should socially own the means of production. I mean, yeah. Change. And, yeah, I, I, th I mean, I think that's a, that's a valid point. Mm, I don't want to say in theory. That's kind of Yeah, it's one corny, of those things but. like... If I were around then I think I'd be for the New Deal. Like it just it's gonna come down to if whether or not you're more reform minded or not. Yeah. I get I don't know, I get having some people saying we should be doing more. That's yeah. Because we should. Yeah. But on the other hand, I wouldn't be complaining too much about, you know, <laughs> massive changes that were happening. You yeah, know. you could support them and then immediately turn around and be like, also, we want more. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think that's generally our stance on, yeah. <laughs> on things. Um, so they also were very active in fighting for civil rights for African Americans. Cool. Um, this is from very early on. Uh, socialist leaders A. Philip Randolph, Bayard Rustin, and A.J. Musty uh, put together the March on Washington movement in wow. 1941. Okay. This is to protest against racial discrimination in federal uh, industries like the war industry that was ramped mm -hmm. up at that time uh, and uh, discrimination in the armed forces like segregation. Mm, yeah, yeah. There. Uh, basically what happened is they were organizing this thing saying, we're going to march on Washington. And that scared the leaders in Washington so much <laughs> that they took action. So where the march doesn't actually ever take place. Oh. But they make the change like before that. Roosevelt issues a an executive order. Mm -hmm. uh, executive order 8802, the Fair Employment Act, okay. uh, which bans discrimination in war industries. Okay. So they got what they wanted there. That was the first uh, federal action in the United States to promote equal opportunity and prohibit employment discrimination. Cool. I want to use that tactic today. Let's all like just Facebook RSVP for a big march and threaten crazy shit. And then <laughs> and we don't actually have to go. That sounds yeah, great. Just scare them into doing it. That was, <laughs> that was good. Uh, they kind of keep the movement up, keep public pressure up. And so in 1948, they eventually succeed in making President Truman then 
uh, abolish racial segregation in the armed forces. There we go. So they get the other part of their nice. goal too. These leaders later go on to help organize the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s, notably helping to organize the 1963 March on Washington. I was going to ask like if those were related directly or not. Cause I'm they had like... some of the, you know, some of the same leaders involved. Okay, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Bayard Rustin's interesting because he was very behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was purposefully so because he was gay. Oh, okay. And he had had like a criminal charge based on that oh. for, you know, how they would trump up stuff on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he was active in this as much as he could be. Mm -hmm. But he was Maybe. always very kind of hidden. Yeah. Uh, because of that. So he's, he's an interesting guy. The Socialist Party uh, ends up not running presidential candidates after 1956. Okay. Uh, when, they, uh, when their guy Darlington Hooper uh, got... 2,000 votes in in six states. That's not so, good. Uh, yeah. Oof. The name, though, Darlington Hooper. That's a cool name. That's a good name for a cat. <laughs> yes, Darlington. <laughs> Come here, dear Darlington. That is. That's a good cat name. I have a question about the civil rights stuff they were doing. Yeah. Were all those names you mentioned, those were all white people? No. Uh, so A. Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin were black. Oh, okay. A. J. Musty was white. He was from, he was an immigrant from the Netherlands, I want to say. Okay. Um, and he was like involved in this. I think he's like a preacher later on too. I don't know. Cool. But, I was just curious like how much of their membership, you know, actually was black. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So they did have they had black leadership. Yeah. They had some, some black leaders and membership as well. Cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, then let's get to the bad times for them. Okay. In 1972, December, they end up renaming themselves the Social Democrats USA. Okay. All right. I uh, just feel like we're just kind of shifting letters around for most of this. <laughs> just, it's like a, a fridge poem, you know, just with Democrat, Socialist, Communist, <laughs> just, and then you just kind of slide them around every time you change groups. Yeah. You have to come up with the right, the right order of them. <laughs> oh, wait, this one's already been used. I got to switch it. <laughs> yes. Uh, they were kind of trying to ditch the socialist part and be, you know, seem softer. Uh. People. Uh, they became a political organization and they were less focused. They weren't like electoral, like let's run candidates ourselves. Mm -hmm. They were mainly focused on trying to organize labor unions and civil rights groups uh, into a coalition to try to move the Democratic Party to the left. Okay, cool. It doesn't end up, you know, obviously it doesn't end up working too well. Yeah. We've got the Democratic Party that we have today. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, they were also anti-communist. Yeah, as I say, the 70s, I, I don't imagine we had many wins in, in socialism in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the Social Democrats USA, they emphasized that they were against, like, the Soviet Union. Oh, yeah. Communist aggression. You know, communist domination of whatever, you know, all this was, they were very careful. Yeah. They were trying to tell everybody who would listen <laughs> how much they did not like communists. Okay. Uh, and that kind of, you know, the whole thing kind of pissed some people off. Yeah. And so these disaffected members said, fuck it, we'll go do our own thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Some of them who wanted to keep doing things the old way, you know, kind of stick to what they had been doing mm -hmm. as a socialist party, they left and formed uh, the Union for Democratic Socialism. So there's their... <laughs> That's their word poem. Uh-huh. And then shortly thereafter, they changed the name to Socialist Party USA. Okay. Hey, I've heard of that one. Uh, it, Socialist Party USA, generally, they, they're still around. Okay, um, yes. They have good positions. You know, they have good political positions or whatever. They're very tiny. Okay. Their estimated membership is like 1,500 people. That's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the only Socialist Party USA member who currently holds elected office is Pat Noble, who's a member of a school board somewhere. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure he's doing great work there. Yeah, probably. Um, they, I mean, they're, they're kind of cool, though. Like, they say that they support building a non-racist, classless, feminist, socialist society. I'm in. Right? They want Count me in. people to own and control the means of production and distribution through democratically controlled public agencies, cooperatives, and other collective groups. Cool. Full employment for everybody. Workers have the right to form unions, to strike, to engage in, in job actions. And production of society should be based uh, on the benefit of all humanity, not for the private profit of a few. That sounds great. Yeah, I mean, you know, like cool, good positions. <laughs> yeah, uh, just not a lot of people to hold them. <laughs> yeah, so they exist. 
They exist. They're in our list. What a review. <laughs> I'm picturing that in the back of a DVD. Two this stars. This existed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the other split, mm -hmm. they had another split here, okay. uh, was one of their prominent members from the now Social Democrats USA, Michael Harrington. Okay. Uh, he ends up leaving. He doesn't like that the uh, new group is going to be focused more on the labor unions. And uh, he thinks it should be more focused on like the anti-war movement. Oh, okay. Interesting. This is what year again? Uh, this is... Right after their split. So this is in 1973 when he splits. Oh, okay. That's a good time to be anti-war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He thought that was the major issue and that we should be pushing that above everything else. He leaves and forms the Democratic Socialist Organizing Committee. They also kind of try to move the Democratic Party to the left. And then eventually they end up merging with another group to form the Democratic Socialists of America. Hey, Dude, did you see the new t-shirt design? I did not, no. Oh. Let me show you. This is for DSA North Texas. I ordered one like immediately after seeing it. Look at this fucking shit. Holy shit, what? <laughs> there's a Pegasus, there's multiple Pegasi, there's <laughs> the reunion tower, there's roses, and in the background there's an explosion. That is crazy. It's so good. It's what? very good. <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. I'm only telling listeners that because I've already ordered mine, so <laughs> I didn't want there to be any shortages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that kind of gets us to the end of the the Socialist Party of America. Okay. Because then now you're left with Socialist Party USA, which, like we said, exists but is small, mm -hmm. and the uh, Democratic Socialists of America okay. still exists is big. There's really at that point no more people in. Uh, so Social Democrats USA does still exist. Okay. They just they don't do anything. I mean they <laughs> they, they chill. like yeah they try to advocate for causes or whatever, but they're small and moderate and kind of weird. Okay. So now let's jump back to that split where we had the two communist parties. Right, you had the Communist Party of America uh -huh. and the Communist Labor Party. Why did they split again? I'm so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Listeners will benefit from this too. So they split. <laughs> um, these were the guys who split because they got kicked out. Okay. Because the... they wanted to join the common turn. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, and they so like, they got no. kicked out. And okay. then some of them were like, let's make a party. And some of them tried and failed to rejoin. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These so guys. these are the ones that liked Russia, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The pro Soviet ones. The common turn did not like that there ended up being two parties. Oh, because they were trying to get a big group. Yeah. So they just told them. Kiss and make up, oh. figure it out, become one party. Okay. So they did so. They formed the Communist Party USA in 1919. Okay. They immediately uh, get cracked down on by the by the authorities. I'm sure. Uh, they get persecuted. They have to go underground. This is the Red Scare. Yeah, the first one. Mm -hmm. So they have to go. On, they become a secret organization. Shit, that's cool. Uh, yeah, they start a <laughs> they start like a front political party called the Workers Party of America. Okay. Now it's not, I, I don't think it's very well hidden because its logo is like a, a hammer and a sickle. I mean, <laughs> but not very sneaky. Yeah. I guess they're just not technically called they don't the have communist that word. party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Dumb. so they have, they have this kind of front group and meanwhile they're doing secret organizing underground. Cool. Uh, in the, by the late twenties, the red scare is kind of faded. So they are able to come back and say, actually we're the communist party. Of USA. The we're whole cool. time. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, so let's get into kind of what they do. Okay. Communist party USA during the great depression, they're mainly known for organizing labor actions like strikes, um, and organizing labor unions in the first place. Mm -hmm. They're also known for organizing the unemployed into what were called unemployed councils. Okay. So what this was kind of like a way to get political power to unemployed people. It would be, um, it's similar to in the Soviet Union, they had Soviets or councils yes. of people there, of workers, but you also had councils of unemployed people to agitate, to get in the streets and protests, to uh, do demonstrations like at city meetings and stuff. They were making demands like people should be paid while they're unemployed and stuff. Mm, okay, cool. Um, basically fighting for things they needed. Yeah. And this was in like times before we had unemployment, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. Yeah. yeah. Really. Unemployment assistance. We, we had unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Everyone had a job before the 1920s. Everyone knows it that. It was easy. Yeah. Just <laughs> pick them up off the street. Yeah. Uh, they also fought 
against evictions um, in nice. terms of farmers getting thrown out of their land or workers getting thrown out of their apartment. Yeah. Um, the authorities would go and like just clean out your plate. They would put your furniture out in the street. Fuck. And so these guys, the Communist Party, they had uh, their activists go and like move your shit back in. <gasps> That's so be nice. Like, no, we're not doing that. You know, That's we're awesome. not evicting this guy. Uh, they also were fighting uh, for the rights of African Americans. Cool. A big example of this was the case of the Scottsboro Boys, uh, which were nine black teenagers, uh, aged 13 to 19. They were falsely accused of a rape in 1931. Jeez, I think I've heard this name before. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty high profile uh, case. The only reason that it was able to be uh, to be appealed and going through all that process, the legal defense fund in the first place was funded by the CPUSA and by nice. the NAACP as well. Yeah, so this was a uh, really high profile thing that the Communist Party was backing. That's awesome. And it's, it's, a, it's a big deal because like they were using all white juries mm. and the Supreme Court said, no, 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 you have to actually include black people in the jury yeah. because of what's going on here, you know? So it was a long process, but they were fighting for that. And that one, you know, that won them some African-American support. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, they, let's see, when the New Deal starts, mm -hmm. they initially opposed it. Just like, like the Socialist guys? Party. Yeah. Okay. They were like, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. We're here for communism, yo. <laughs> right. Uh, but in 1935, they changed their mind. Okay. And here's where an interesting element of the Communist Party comes to light. It's because uh, they were told to by Moscow. Okay, I feel like that's not going to go down well with a lot of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, it ends up making them look kind of bad, depending on what happens. So most of the members of the Communist Party did not take their directives from the Soviet Union. They were there to because they believed in what they were what they were doing. Yeah, you know, they had their own. They formed their own views of things, and they were independent people. The leadership of the party did pretty much have to take its orders uh, from the Soviet Union. Hmm. Okay. They were given directives and they may have like kind of protested and kind of like tried to implement it a different way. But most of the time they kind of just follow those directives. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, it can run them into a lot of problems. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> that sounds like an easy way to get persecuted. Well, so here's an example of that going badly. Okay. Uh, in 1935, uh, the common turn was concerned about rising fascism in Europe. Sorry, this is common turn with yeah. an N? Uh-huh. Okay. Which is the Communist International, just shortened. Right? Oh, okay. Got it, got it. Rising fascism in Europe, you've got Spain, you know, going through their mm. civil war with the nationalists versus the Republicans. Yes. Um, then you have Germany, that's Nazi Germany Abs. now. Yeah. Uh, and the Soviet Union was really concerned about that. Okay. You know? Uh, so they ordered the Communist Party of the United States, as well as any other communist parties in the world that they that were in their group, uh, to form popular fronts. Okay, what's that? Which just means like you're going to work with all the sort of left people. Mm -hmm. All right, and work with the socialists, work with the democratic socialists, the social democrats, the Democratic Party doesn't matter. <laughs> work with anybody who okay. will who will take you. Okay. Work with anyone who is going to be anti-fascist. Cool. It's yeah. It's it's kind of good. Probably right? what we should do next fucking week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, a week before the election. Yeah. The uh, so the Communist Party USA they say okay yeah that's what we're doing we're we're doing that they raise funds for medical relief they send members to fight in the Abraham Lincoln Brigade a, a one of the international brigades in the Spanish Civil War. Oh okay. So they I mean they literally go and like. Fight and die for cool. this cause. You know, they, they do that. Yeah. They're, They're anti fascist. Nice. Yeah. But in 1939, the Soviets signed the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, which is a secret, which, which is an agreement mm -hmm. between them and Nazi Germany, a non aggression pact. Oh, that's not good. And they secretly agree that they're going to divide up Poland. Nazis, you take half, we'll take the other half. That's really not good. Not good, right? They ordered the communist party to go along with it this is what we're doing this is the thing now oh Tough. that sucks and so they have to it's it's all of a sudden they start advocating peace instead of anti-fashion they start saying hey i mean like don't try you know don't be such a warmonger don't try to get us into a oh, war with, no. with these guys let europe do its thing you know they all of a sudden whoop. <laughs> uh even when hitler does do his part and invades poland they're like oh, you know, what, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? do yeah <laughs> 
uh, they had a boycott of Nazi goods, they dropped that boycott. Wow. Um, they start attacking FDR as a warmonger. There's some really interesting uh, folk songs that were put out in the time when they, the Communist Party had, had changed its, its tune or whatever. Uh, Pete Seeger and some of the members of the, the Almanac Singers, is what they were called, okay. uh, were, while not necessarily officially party members, were fellow travelers. Yeah. Uh, and changed their tune, too. And so they started saying, no, 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 let's not go to war, let's not go oh, to war. that sucks. They put out a lot of anti-war songs and stuff. <sighs> Just saying, like, let's, which vaguely, I mean, anti-war stuff is generally good. Yeah, so I was thinking about this, because I was listening to the last episode, and yeah, we talked a lot about how people were anti-World War One, and, like, to me, it's like, that one's an easy call, that's a yeah. super imperialist war, but, like, World War Two, it's like, ooh, that one, if you're not against that, like, you kind of have to, come on. Like. It's, it's tough, because, I mean, I, I don't know, what do you, where do you come down on it? Because, like, the Nazis, evil. Yeah. Does that... I mean, there's uh, there are evil regimes today. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I mean, definitely fight Nazis. I'm yeah. for fighting Nazis. <laughs> I'm for fighting Nazis, and I think that you know, obviously, if Nazis were to invade one's own country, yeah. that country should fight back. It's just a tough call as to what to do when they're fighting somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you do, you know, believe in being allies with other countries and stuff, then pretty you should try to get everyone together and fight that one country. You know? Yeah, yeah. But then to get into regime change, I mean, Ugh. you know, that's kind of what we tried to do in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Get the coalition of everyone together to go take them down and put in a new government and stuff. I yeah. Mean, not good. Not always, doesn't always work. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It's, it's, I think, kind of a damaging thing about World War II is that it does set up this black and white thing of like, well, they're Nazis. And like, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah, fuck Nazis. But like... It makes other choices, I think, harder. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. such a such an obvious black and white thing that now you like you get to a more nuanced situation and you're like, well, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It's more con every other situation is way more confusing than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had to, you know, they just started changing their tune like that and saying, yeah. no, let's not go to war. Well, when Hitler breaks that pact and invades the Soviet <laughs> oh, Union, shoot. they have to make an embarrassing. About face again. Oh, that makes them look super Soviet. It really does. <laughs> and so then, like that, I mean, you have it on the same like collection of their songs. Is right after the the anti war song. Now they're like the B side. It's just like J.K. Let's go yeah, to war. <laughs> let's let's go defeat Hitler and stuff. And this is before Pearl Harbor. This is their oh, okay. They're yeah, now yeah. saying they're super pro war. They're like, let's go do this thing. Oh, that sucks, man. Yeah. That's very awkward. It's yeah, it's not good. So uh, <laughs> that was a downside for them, for sure. Uh, but during that time, World War II and the Depression, the Communist Party was kind of it was tolerated. It was it was okay for it to exist, for people to be members of it. Mm -hmm. You really didn't face consequences for that. After the war, that starts to change. Okay. All right, and this eventually leads into the Second Red Scare, a big government yeah. crackdown. Okay. Uh, you've got. Well, you know, we've talked about some of these things before with the House on American Activities mm -hmm. Committee, uh, with uh, the Hollywood Blacklist. Yes, that we talked you about. can learn about it. I think it's episode seven. Yes, you can hear about that on episode seven when we talk about Trumbo in our communist movie night. Yeah. Uh, you also had unions taking part in this. This is terrible. The unions were purging their communist members. Well, that sucks. They were like, you can't be a communist if you're in leadership in this union and stuff like that. What the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. They were trying... Their defense <laughs> would be that they were trying to protect themselves from the government coming down on them. Okay, yeah. But That's it doesn't so make shitty. it any better if you get kicked Just out. Just lie. Um, <laughs> and obviously the FBI was coming down on them. J. Edgar mm. Hoover was looking for any communist he could find. Yeah. Uh, an example of... of Something that went on during the Red Scare was something called the Foley Square Trial. What's that? Uh, which was where the FBI prosecuted 11 leaders of the Communist Party. Okay. Uh, for being communists. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> for Because they were communists, they obviously advocated the violent overthrow of the American government. That's not what that means, but okay. Well, they said, you know, um, you're, you know as an adherent of Karl Marx or whatever, mm, like you're for this you're for revolution, revolution and all that. They had passed a law called the Smith Act. Okay. Uh, which was signed into law by our good friend FDR. That guy. In 1940. 
All right. Which made it a crime to advocate overthrowing the U.S. government by force. So they used that and they said, you're a communist. You advocate this stuff. You're going to jail. That sucks. And so they took these guys, they put them on trial, and they did indeed convict them. Uh, All 11 of them got sent to jail uh, for being communists. Is this Smith Act still around? Should I be worried? This Smith Act is still an existing law. It is not enforced anymore. Oh, or thank anything, God. But not going to jail. Woof. Yeah. Uh, they, don't, they don't enforce it anymore. <laughs> I think some somebody, a federal court or something, declared it unconstitutional to be throwing people in jail for that. But yeah. they didn't like strike down the law, and it hasn't been ruled on by the Supreme Court. So it's okay. still there. But okay. It just, no one tries no to one. use it. Okay. Uh, they eventually, the Communist Party USA just gets straight up outlawed. Fuck. That's the Communist Control Act of 1954 still on the books. That's bad. It's also been ruled unconstitutional. It's never been enforced, but still, it's like, that's a law. You can tell I'm still like a young adult because my first thing is like, well, now I want to join. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to rebel. <laughs> Can't tell me now what it's to cool. do. Um, oh. Overall, the Red Scare decimated the party. They were at a peak of 80,000 members. Knocked down to around 5,000 members. Oh, my gosh. About 1,500 of whom were FBI informants. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. J. Edgar Hoover spent tons of resources of the department to, to infiltrate that place as best he could. Shit. Because he hated them. And they were useful for him, really. Mm. Uh, the Communist Party, obviously, 5,000 members, not a huge threat. But uh, they were useful to go out there and say, look what we're doing, you know. Oh, like, okay to get positive press and to scare people into giving you more power and all that. Yeah. That's classic tactic. The party keeps up its loyalty to the Soviet Union. Even through 1956, this is when uh, Khrushchev gives his secret speech that we mentioned. Oh, yeah. What was that again? This is where he denounced Stalin and said, Stalin, he was a real asshole. This is all the stuff he did. Even once that came out and they were like, oh, shit, man, we were pro-Stalin. Stalin's cool. And they were, I mean, like, they would defend them and everything. And even when the purges were going on, their leader, Earl Browder, would say, look, I mean, you just got to, you know, when people are betraying your country, you just got to kill them. You know, that's how it is. Um, Which was ironic because they were being persecuted for betraying their country. So. True. (laughs) Very true. (laughs) Awkward. Uh, They would have distinguished it and said that, like. Yes, but this government is a bad capitalist okay. bourgeoisie government, and that, that government is a government of the people, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's fine. Um, that speech hurts memberships a lot because people are like, oh, fuck, what did I do? You know? Yeah. But they stay, now they're like, okay, well, I guess Stalin was bad. We're on cruise ship side now. You know? <laughs> they just keep doing it. Sure, that. whatever. They stay loyal pretty much until Gorbachev comes up, which is in the 80s. Like, yeah. Uh, when he starts doing all his reform. Because he's all like trying to get back to capitalism, kind of. Kind of, yeah, basically. When he starts doing that, they're like, hey, Gorbachev, you fucking suck. (laughs) Yeah, what the fuck? And uh, the Soviet Union says, well, you're no longer on our payroll. See you later. They lose their their money. They part ways, you know. Yeah. Wait, did they fund them at all? They had been funding them, yeah. Oh. And communist parties around the world. They had been Okay, I just them. thought they were like friends. Okay. No, they've been giving them orders and yeah, giving them giving them money too. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's awkward. That's the yeah. That's the part <laughs> of the global communist conspiracy that I guess they got right. Like, yeah, sure, I mean we they def they def were doing those things sure, in yeah. some ways. But I mean, I guess it's good to have a global communist conspiracy to counteract the global capitalist conspiracy yeah, that goes yeah. on all over the place. Whatever, you know? man. Overall, the party limped on after that. It technically it still exists today. Okay. So. Listeners, if you're looking for a communist party to join, this is one of your choices. <laughs> okay. It's really weak, though. It's a lot smaller shadow of what it used to be. Maybe I'll just join all of them and just get a bunch of t-shirts. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> your wardrobe is just entirely different. Different communist organizations. I don't do anything in them. I just own the shirts and pay my dues. <laughs> they would accept that. I'm, they'd be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a 13% increase in <laughs> funds. Um, so yeah, overall, what do we think of these guys? They were a little shitty. I didn't like how... I don't know, because it's weird. Because, I mean, I was going to say I don't like how they kind of blindly followed Russia. But at the mm-hmm. same time, yeah, we are kind of for global communism. Mm-hmm. But, like, Russia is kind of a bad example. <laughs> like, they do some bad things. Like, they yeah. shouldn't have been pro-Stalin. Yeah, they shouldn't have been pro a lot of the stuff that Stalin was doing. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, we do also want to separate that, like, Stalin didn't only do bad things. Mm-hmm. You know? But 
Yeah. I agree. They shouldn't have been saying, cool, purges, great. <laughs> My favorite. Know, or with deporting entire groups of people out to Siberia and stuff. Yeah, like, fuck that. Bad. Yeah. They should have been like, hey, that's bad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I guess at the time that may have been a hard call. Yeah. To, to say, this is the only socialist country that exists right now. This is our only support system, too, really. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, I really like what they were doing action-wise in terms of standing up for people's rights and stuff. And yeah, they did some cool shit. Like, civil rights stuff, I think that's great. I don't think that's, like, celebrated enough. So, yeah, yeah that's great. And early on, too, they were doing that, like, well before... 19, I mean, 1941, that's... That's very know, early. ...preceding the actual civil rights movement for a while. Yeah. All right, so there they are, the Communist Party USA. Cool. A brief outline of some things they did. Uh, you can definitely get more in depth with them for sure. Who's next? All right. So next we uh, have a brief foray into the Trotskyist oh. uh, party here. One of the Trotskyist parties. There's multiple <laughs> ones. Um, and it's, I don't really have a ton about it, but they're called the Socialist Workers Party. Okay. They're only kind of, the only reason I bring it up is because on the most recent uh, True Blaze episode, they mentioned that Tom was like a member of it oh, beforehand. Oh yeah. And <laughs> he like couldn't vote. Yeah. <laughs> They, because of the primary or something like that, they were like, "Oh, he's on the." the That's socialist in the back workers. of the book. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, "Oh yeah, I guess they're a thing." Okay, let me look them up. That's so funny. I added them on here, uh, but they split from the Socialist Party in 1938. Okay. Or Trotskyists, um, meaning they for they follow the ideas of Leon Trotsky. We kind of covered yeah. that in our types of leftist mm -hmm. episode he's the one that likes global communism right yeah he wanted world revolution okay uh, he thought it was very important i guess for a socialist country to go and try to foment revolution in other countries okay yeah yeah so that you have friends right yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and that really was only possible that way because otherwise the capitalist countries are just going to besiege you and you lose yeah so they uh the socialist workers party they've always been kind of small uh, mm -hmm. And pretty insignificant in terms of doing things on a national scale. They are involved in uh, labor strikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they were they're big time into supporting Cuba. Uh, they have like a publication called The Militant, which they publish, which Whoa. is a cool name. That is a very cool name. <laughs> <laughs> but they're very annoying in terms of factional disputes. Okay. Like they're most petty. of what yeah, most of what I read about them was just how they. We're arguing about which tendency should be there, or somebody split off into a into the real Trotsky thing or something, you know? Okay. Yeah, that's kind of... That's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> and with many of the smaller groups that I'll kind of mention at the end, that's what you get is just a lot of arguing. I mean, it kind of makes sense because if you think about it, if they had stuck with the bigger group, like, you probably have a tendency to like find agreements with other people. Whereas if you're like, fuck you, I'm starting my own. You're probably more likely to say, fuck you. I'm starting my own again. Yeah. <laughs> you and all the other people who want to do it. Yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. join a group of angry people. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? Yep. Yeah. For real. And I, I cut a lot of that from the history of the socialists mm. and the communist party as well. They had a ton of that too. Messy bitches. It's yeah. <laughs> Most of the history that I found on them was involving their factional disputes, their leadership arguments, oh all this gosh. stuff. Okay. I cut that because it wasn't interesting it's to just, me. It's baby Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter before they had Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's hop into the next major party then, the Democratic Socialists of America. Hell yeah. Paying those dues. Yeah. Um, so this was formed from the Democratic Socialist Organizing Committee. Okay. Which was Michael Harrington's group. They, that group merged with a group called the New American Movement, just some political okay. group, uh, and they formed the Democratic Socialists of America in 1982. That seems late. I thought they were around longer. Yeah. That first thing, the DSOC, they were mm. around for that kind of gap. Okay. And so then they, they merged. Uh, technically, they're a nonprofit, actually. Interesting. They're not actually a political party. They don't actually run people, technically. Okay. They just endorse people. Okay. Which I found strange. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Um, which it just seemed like something I would have known. <laughs> and nope. I'm a little <laughs> I was, embarrassed. I was wrong. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're actually a nonprofit. They started with around 5,000 members. Mm -hmm. Now they have more than 70,000. Wow. Okay. They're the largest uh, socialist organization in the United States today. Cool. They have a 
181 local chapters. They have three members in Congress. Fuck yeah. Uh, AOC. My baby. Uh, Rashida Tlaib. Yeah. And Danny K. Davis. I don't know him. <laughs> Maybe it's he's right. cool. Danny K. Davis. Oh, okay. And Illinois. Chicago. Okay. From Chicago, much of Western Chicago, including the Loop. I know about the Loop. I was going to say... For all you Chicago <laughs> listeners, because I don't know where that is. I have a lot of coworkers from Chicago. Okay. All right. So yeah, he's a he's a DSA member. Interesting. They have twenty members of state legislatures as well. It's not very so, many, but okay. No. But I mean it's you know <laughs> Some, I guess it's sizable. Yeah. For a socialist organization. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh overall, their history has been one of trying to elect their members. As Democrats, so yeah. they endorse somebody, somebody who's very progressive, um, who's, who's, you know, in this in these cases, a member, uh, and they try to push the party to the left. Which <laughs> I was gonna say, how's that going? Uh, not well. Yeah, and then you get to the classic thing that we saw earlier with the Socialist Party split off: is do we try to push it to push the existing parties to the left, or do we? Try I'm to do our own it. thing. I'm kind of over it. I want to do our own thing. Because yeah, you think about, like, do people actually trust the Democratic Party? Um, I think... Liberals do, I guess. Liberals do. Um, I see so many Nancy with... Pelosi stands out there. It makes me sick. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I don't yeah. engage, I guess, in enough social media. You're not on feminist to... Instagram, apparently. No. <laughs> it's not a great oh, place no. to be. Wow. <laughs> that made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. Okay, but th so this is... It's the big question. But we see failure on both sides. We see failure with people who are trying to convert the party to the left, mm -hmm. whether that's efforts to, like they were doing to try to reform the Democratic Party mm -hmm. or with the guys who were like, oh, let's rejoin the Socialist Party and, and take it over. Like that oftentimes doesn't work. Yeah. Because the party is there because like they believe in those things and they're trying to advance that agenda. They're not interested in advancing yours. Right. I yeah. Mean, but on the other hand, we have a big list of of these parties that we've that gone through, and we've only gone through those that you know have never held elected office. That did their best when they got like five percent of the presidential election. That that's true. Know, had some mayors and stuff, but uh, and so, and some Congress people. You had uh, Victor Berger, who we talked mm -hmm. about last time, who was a Congress person. But you had a lot of stuff through direct action, like Communist Party USA. They like got some shit done. True. True. So I kind of would be willing just to say, fuck it. Let's get shit done. If we get elected, great. But like, we're just here to get shit done. Uh, so you, you're you saying you would want... I just want to scare people. You want to do direct action. You want <laughs> yeah. to actually change things on the ground. Uh -huh. You want to scare leadership into mm -hmm. doing things. Elected I wanna, officials. <laughs> I don't actually want this, but I think it'd be really interesting if like we just revived Communist Party USA to the point where we're like, fuck, where's that Smith Act? I gotta undust that off. <laughs> Or I guess just regularly dust it off. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, that makes sense. And when we look at, you know, I've said this before, I think, on the show, that the New Deal was, did as much as it did, mm -hmm. bothered to go as far as it did, because they were truly scared of there being a revolution. Yeah. Of people taking to the streets. You had Communist Party membership swelling. You had, you know, Socialist Party membership growing too. Like, I mean, people were taking to radical parties mm -hmm. and saying, we've got to do something to change the system overall. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, just kidding. We don't want to do that. Yeah. Here's some, here's some welfare. And so maybe you're right that we should just be, you know, sticking to these parties anyway, or forming new parties of them, whatever. Mm -hmm. Having an organization that's dedicated to saying, we've got to go beyond what they're asking for. A new international. And, <laughs> yeah. And making it popular enough. To where the people who are already in power get scared and do what we want. Yeah. Or some of what we want. Because I think if you get popular enough, you can win some elections. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't, you still can scare people. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you think that whatever group we're talking about here, whether it's DSA, which would have to kind of change itself <laughs> into a political party. They would have to go crazy. Or one of the existing parties. Do you think that it would be helpful for them to run candidates what if we what if we did splitsies mm -hmm. what if dsa kept running candidates and stuff or that what if they actually ran candidates because right now dsa party mm -hmm. candidates. and okay. then the other group was like because i feel like that's what most of the splits come down to is like no we want to do electoralism no we don't mm -hmm. let's just have two parties and one's strictly electoralism the other one's out there on the fucking streets because i feel like those are two different people 
So what you're boiling it down to then is we're w- this podcast is then a supporter of <laughs> Daniel DeLeon, right? DeLeonism. Yes. I mean, that's pretty much what we're doing here. We're saying... Do both. Do both. Por qué no last us? Yeah. Do <laughs> labor organizing, do popular organizing in the streets, direct actions, mm-hmm. whatever, wherever you can to change society directly and to scare people into electing mm-hmm. people, but also run people. But I'm I guess what my idea is, because mm-hmm. I think DeLeon wanted to do it in one party. I think we do it in two different parties. Okay. And that way, we can be as scary as we want on one side. And the other guys are just going to be like, oh, look, we're nice. And we're listening to the people. And like we're they, they don't have like the taint of, of right. scariness on them. So they might have more of a shot of getting elected. It seems like you could do that with... You don't even have to make another party, though. Like You can't do it with the Democratic Party, because they are really they're, pro-capitalist. They're done. I'm done with them. But you could maybe do that with the Green Party. They are in mm-hmm. some ways kind of anti, I don't know how anti-capitalist they are, but they are everything else. They have on good politics cool. in a lot of ways. Yeah. They're just kind of small. No, they're not very yeah. powerful. You could do that with them or with one of these other parties if you want. Mm-hmm. But the more, I think another running theory we have is the more regular American, not socialist it seems. Mm-hmm. the better it is. That's true. So we say Green Party and we just say, like, oh, look, we're doing our yeah. best here. Or like they used to have with the, the People's Party or the Populists. Mm. Or oh, whatever, yeah, right? that'd be good. You just say something like, we're just for the people. You know, <laughs> yeah, we're just, yeah. We're just ordinary we're for regular Americans. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let them go run and try out electoralism, do their very, very best. Yeah. The only give them money and shit. You just want them to be like left-ish. Yeah, I just want... Like, you know, whole Congress of AOC kind of people. We'll, yeah. We'll let them do the reform shit. In the meantime, we're over here being angry on the streets, holding their feet to the fire. That way, whenever they get in power, they won't get too comfy. Do you, you so you kind of want people who are like, who want to be like you, right? They, people who wish they could be more radical, but <laughs> they're constrained by having to get elected. Yes. And so then when you push them, they're like, well, I mean, they're right. I know they're right. I got to do something. To move, you know, to give them what they want. Yeah, you know, basically you, giving them more incentive to act. Say, like, look, there's all these people on the streets who fucking want this, and you claim to be for these things when you got elected, so you should probably do those things. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And also to scare, like, any moderates that are still left. That's a good idea. That's my plan. Two-party yeah. plan. All right. <laughs> the two-party plan. <laughs> Make it plan. happen, internet. I'm not going to do anything. De Leonism. With a twist, I guess. De Leon too. This time he's a lion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to give a brief shout out to all the other still existing socialist parties. Is this exist. gonna? Is this gonna be like the end of like a a medical ad where you just kind of talk really quickly in a monotone? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think anyone wants to hear that. <laughs> it could be done that way. There's okay. So there's. Different, you know, stripes, I guess. You have your Marxist-Leninists guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, which are the Workers' World Party. The Party for Socialism and Liberation. This is, we're getting, we're doing the I'm word scramble thing Exactly here. what I was thinking. Uh, the Progressive Labor Party. The American Party of Labor. The Freedom Road Socialist Organization. Oh, that's kind of poetic. The Liberation Road. <laughs> okay. Uh, Communist Party USA Provisional Wing. What is that even? Like if everyone there dies? This is like a secret organization, I think, because they are invitation only. <laughs> oh my God. Literally. And they don't like put out publications except for like tape recordings from this guy. Like it's just. That's so creepy. It's creepy. Yeah. It's, it's been described as a political cult. I don't know what they do. That's I don't think they do creepy. anything. They just exist. <laughs> they just are creepy there in the corner. Yeah. So if, if uh, you're cool enough, if you're communist enough. You'll get, uh, you know, your Communist Party USA provisional wing invitation through smoke I... signal, I guess. <laughs> you have your Trotskyists, which are the Freedom Socialist Party, the Socialist Equality Party, the Socialist Action Party, the Socialist Alternative Party, and Solidarity. That's a good short one. I like that. Yeah, that one. I'm part of Solidarity. Simple. Yeah. Uh, and then you got just general socialist stuff, the all African people's revolutionary party and the revolutionary communist party USA. Okay. That one sounds like it's going to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're kind of tempting fate. Yeah. Uh, those all still exist. They're options for you besides the ones that we mentioned before that still exist. Mm-hmm. There you go. Those are our honorable mentions. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, we did want to ca- tackle a listener question we got. 
asking for a good book to read on the history of the CPUSA. Ooh. Yeah. Basically asking for something that is not biased against it. Uh, because, well, for understandable reasons, most of the histories that are out there are going to be like the dark history of communism <laughs> or something like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, so one resource you could use uh, is the book titled History of the Communist Party of the United States by William Z. Foster. Okay. William Z. Foster was twice the general secretary of the Communist Party of the United States. So it's sort of an insider's view and obviously will be sympathetic toward their, uh, toward their struggles. Yeah. That one is available online uh, for free. You can go to marxist.org slash archive slash Foster and see all of his writings. Damn. And if you click on, it's closer to the bottom. This is 1952. And then it says history of the Communist Party of the United States. Click on that. It takes you to williamzfoster.blogspot.com. And that's got the book there. Cool. I love Marxist.org. There's so much free shit there. Yeah. Sorry to do like half my research. I honestly don't <laughs> know how far this goes because my understanding was this was a 600 page tome. Oh shit. Yeah. That doesn't look like 600 pages. But no, no I look at the bottom. It says the chapter bottom four. Looks to chapter four of. Yeah. You, it looks like you just go chapter by chapter, dude. Cause look over here, chapter one. That's yeah. a lot. Okay. Shit, so dude. it's all on there. <laughs> Uh, hopefully crazy. You can check that out history of the, and it goes through, man, this is just what you should read instead of listening to our episodes on this. <laughs> it starts back with the international working men's association and stuff and different parties. Wow. Okay. <laughs> You're like, shit, I should now read I'm, this. Yeah, now I'm going to read this and <laughs> make some corrections. That's funny. There you go. That's about it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Would you like to play a game? Let us play a game. Okay. So I have taken... All of the adjectives from these various organizations in one column. Okay. All of the, like, describer nouns. Mm -hmm. I guess those are just nouns. <laughs> All the nouns. And then, like, okay, the association, yeah. like, where it's from. Ah, uh, okay. Got it. So they're in a little spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. We have 20 options for the first one, so we'll be rolling a D20. All right. And then we have a D8 and a D4 for the others, and we were going to find our own party names. Oh, sweet. All right, so we're going to generate one for you, one for me? Yeah. All right. And if you don't, if you want to do, you can roll the first column twice if you want, because a lot of these are long. So you can add two? Like you can be you can the pick. whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. or you pick from them? Oh, you, you add two. Okay. You roll twice for the first one, if you want to. You don't have to, if you're like, no, that's cool enough. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. got it. And I did add a couple just to fill out the list. I added two, but I think they were cool. So it's like, yeah, it's okay. let's do it. <laughs> okay. All cool. right. And then we can have the listeners vote and see which one they like better. <laughs> yeah. And that'll be the official podcast party that yeah. we'll start in the future. <laughs> and we can publish this list. You can make your own. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if you don't have fucking D&D &D dice because you're not as nerdy as us, <laughs> first off, fix that. D&D &D is magical. Or just use a random num number generator. So. Yeah, I think Google will let you just roll <laughs> oh, D20 yeah. dice and everything built in. So. We've definitely done that for Backyard D&D. &D. Yeah, so. All right, let's begin. Who wants right. to go first? You go first. All right, here we go. D20. Oh, I might not want to cord. Four, what do you got? I am social democratic. Oh, you're going to be the loser one. I would social recommend not. Social democratic. I would recommend not doing it again because that'd be long, but you can if you want. Social Democratic and something, something else. Something else. That's cool. I'm going to keep it as an option. I'll, I'll roll okay. again and If maybe it's shitty, we can throw it out. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Labor. Okay. Social Democratic labor. I'm going to recreate like the Russian party, basically. <laughs> Probably. The Communist Party, I think, was the Social Democratic Labor Party of Russia or something. I don't know. All right. Got no, that one. A D8. D8. Four. International. You definitely are going hard Russian on this one. Social Democratic Labor International. Uh, D4 for this one. Ah, okay. Two. Of Texas. <laughs> Two is of Texas? It's of your state. Of your state. Texas. Okay. <laughs> Social Democratic International. Labor International. Oh, Labor International. Of Texas. That's bad. <laughs> That's a bad one. <laughs> Nice. That one didn't have much of a shot. That got really long, really fast. I like it, man. Social Democratic Labor International of Texas. <laughs> That's where it's at. Yeah. All right. Let's see, it's my turn. Okay. D20. Got an 18. 
revolutionary. Yeah. I'm the one on the ground. Yeah, you're cooler than I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll roll again. We'll see. What if I get something cool? 11. Workers. Revolutionary workers is a good start. <laughs> All right. Seven. Action. That's going to be a weird one. Wow. Revolutionary workers action. What is that? I can't read Four. this. Four. Okay. Oh, it's on the bottom. Of America. The Revolutionary Workers Action of America. Damn. I sound like I'm going to fight you some people. You are. Yeah, you're starting a street <laughs> insurrection. For sure. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. All right. We'll be publishing this if you want to play along. So, yeah, like I said, it's it's adjectives <laughs> and then like things like club, party, whatever, and then of wherever. Yeah. All right. Yeah, hopefully you get better results than I did anyway. <laughs> Yours is a bit of a mouthful. Mine's not, not the best. Yours is pretty cool. Thank you. But it's also scary. It's very scary. <laughs> I'm the scary one. Maybe we rework yours to be, uh, what was yours again? It was Social Democratic. Labor International of Texas. Maybe we take out the of Texas so it's just more global. And Social can, Democratic can... Labor International is pretty cool. That's cool. It's like, you know, they all used to be called social democratic. Like that's, that used to be the old socialist thing mm. was, you know, you'd be a social democratic. And party. now it's like watered down. Yeah. Now that means like you're a loser, you know, you're, you're just a reformist. <laughs> you're a loser. You know, we here obviously are also losers. <laughs> We're in that. But um, back then you could be revolutionary and be social democratic. Because if, if what it actually means is like you just like voting, which is fine. Well, yeah, well, you want a social democracy. You want democracy, yeah. but open to the people instead. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, they, you know, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union started out as the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party. Yeah, yours is so. very close to that. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got there. The You're international threw me off. Yeah, but. you got a little Trotsky-ish. <laughs> uh, all right, that was a fun game. Yeah. All right, so for next time... We're going to be slogging it through an evening and night of woe and misery <laughs> on your behalf. All right. We're going to be doing that for you, the dear listener. We're going to be following election coverage. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here with wine and sadness, and I'll probably be hung over the next day. So... Yeah, uh, it'll, you know, if that episode is a little bit raw, we're not going to do too much in terms of processing it because we're going to try to get it to you the next day. We figure you're going to need something. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Okay. I mean, what are your, what are your thoughts about not just how that'll be for us, but how it'll shake out? How that'll be. I don't even fucking know. Yeah. I, well, I, my thing is, I don't think we're going to know by the end of the night even. I don't think so either. I really no. don't. Like, well, one thing is, I read that our turnout is already higher just due to mail-in. Like we're already like way higher than we were last year. Cause so many people are mailing in. Yeah. Mm. So that's, I guess good. But then they have to, they can't open that till election day. So you have, mm. like, that's one of the reasons why they're like, Oh, it's going to take forever because. Cause they have to count all those mail-ins. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess what I meant by that is maybe that's a good sign for fucking Biden, but I don't know. I just don't even know. Nope. I'm no kind idea. of just shutting it out of my mind. So we'll be covering that. We'll be talking about what it means, what whatever happens means for people who think like us, you know, <laughs> leftists who really don't have too much of a dog in the fight. Yeah. But I guess you shouldn't have dogs in fights. <laughs> Please don't put your dogs in fights. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be covering that Through. and probably just. I don't know. Yeah, I'm picturing us like peeking through our hands over our faces. <laughs> yeah, and if that never comes out, that's because it was too terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. In the meantime, you can find us online. We are on Instagram at Teach Me Communism. We are on Twitter at Teach Communism. You can send us an email, teachmecommunism at gmail.com. You can send us a question or like a recommendation for a future episode. And yeah, that'd be cool. You can leave us a review on Apple yeah. Podcasts. That's super nice of you to do that. Yeah, it's my favorite thing. <laughs> and we also have a Patreon, mm -hmm. patreon.com slash teach me communism. That's where we upload all of our notes. So if you listen to this and you're like, I can't remember anything. <laughs> 
we'll have those notes released for you there if you become a five dollar patron and we're going to donate those to a local mutual aid fund so yeah oh we're also on youtube if listening to podcasts on youtube is your thing but i mean i don't know anyone who does that but maybe people do that sure i think we have a few <laughs> views so some people are doing it. okay cool <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, listeners, catch us next time. Remember, the early release is planned anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, catch another episode of Teach Me Communism, where the class struggle is always in session. All right. Bye. Bye.